Good evening. It's time to begin our service. As a matter of fact, I think we're one minute behind schedule. If you'll indulge me, I apologize. Um, a hearty welcome to everyone. It's a good evening to be here. We have several announcements, so if you would bear with me. Um, uh, the sick and recovering from our bulletin and our screens, please remember that list. Uh, add uh, these as well. Taylor LeMay will be having a surgical procedure tomorrow. Let's keep her in our prayers. <clears throat> Roger Brooks at home recovering. From, well, he's at his son's house in Birmingham recovering from kidney surgery. Ronald Brock doing some better. That's good news. Prayers requested for Willie Tony, who is a co-worker of Sam Scott. His daughter Nikita passed away Thursday night unexpectedly. Also prayers for the uh, family of Billy Clardy. Uh, he was a Huntsville police officer who was killed in the line of duty. Noel Counts at home not doing well. Martha Bowen, prayers have been requested for Martha for health reasons as well. And Deborah Hall at home not feeling well. Uh, I have a very good friend, Jeanette Baker. I mentioned her last week, I think. She had a heart valve replacement surgery Friday. Uh, I spoke with her son, and he's doing, she's doing well. Expects to be moved out of ICU to there tomorrow. But we have an address for Jeanette as well. It'll be on the clipboard. <clears throat> uh, prayers and cards would be appreciated. And I was asked to mention the family of Gail Moore. Gail Moore was found dead Thursday. Uh, no details um, at this time, but please pray for the family of Gail Moore. I also want to express our sympathy. Let's uh, keep this family in prayers. Tim and Nancy Hester, Tim's father, passed away. His funeral will be in Gainesville, Georgia, <clears throat> Tuesday. Um, excuse me. Yes, visitation Tuesday, funeral Wednesday. And the family of Richard Montgomery in your prayers as well. Uh, Mr. Montgomery passed away yesterday. So long list. Uh, it'll all be available on the clipboard here if you've missed any of those. Upcoming events. Uh, fellas, remember on the 14th, men's breakfast. It was announced this morning, 8 a.m. We hope, we're not guaranteeing, but we hope to eat around 8 a.m. If you would like to help with the cooking, Sam says we're going to, we need to start cooking by 7. We're going to try to cook here as part of our fellowship. So by 7, try to be here if you want to help cook, and we hope to have it all done and ready to eat around 8 a.m. Ladies brunch on the same day, December 14th, the home of Beth James. Please sign the sheet in the back if you plan to attend. And if you're interested in riding the van to Best House, you need to be here at the building by 9.45. December 15th is our NHC service at 2 p.m. on December the... Okay, this is conflicting statement. I'm going to read what this says. December 15th, NHC service at 2 p.m. December 20th. Um, I don't have my calendar pulled up. It is the 15th. The 15th, Okay. The 15th, the NHC service at 2 p.m. And the 20th, caroling and youth lock-in. Um, there are some children still that we've received names uh, for help with Christmas. We have three children remaining. See Bertha if you'd like to help with those. And also, uh, we're still planning on preparing the food boxes for the needy families. There's a list of suggested items in the back. <clears throat> but the Houston Hutto is going to have our opening prayer. Uh, have Brother Larry Little down for our closing prayer. And... Uh, Jeff will be leading our song service at the appropriate time. Dave will bring us our lesson. If there's anything else, get with me. We'll get it announced. Let us pray. All right, Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. We thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings of life you've given us up to this point in time. We're especially thankful for this opportunity we have together again to, to study and learn more about your word, that we can be better uh, Christian examples to those that we meet and, and uh associated with in our daily walks of life. We ask special blessings to all those who have been mentioned that are sick and, and struggling at this time, that uh, you'll be with the doctors and nurses administering to them that they can do the things that's most needed to get them back to a reasonable portion of health. Ask also that you be with those that are recently lost loved ones, that you give them the strength and comfort that they need at this time to deal with the, the troubling times that they're going through. We ask that you be with us as we uh, or go about our further walks in life that will be the Christian examples you have us to be. Most of all, we're thankful for your son Jesus, the ultimate example that came to this earth, suffered and died on the cruel cross of Calvary, that through his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension on high, we have a hope for eternity with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
first song this evening will be number 439. We'll sing the first and last verses, number 439. <coughs> love divine, all love Next song be number 466. Or 466. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses. <clears throat> Excuse me. would like Mark's song of invitation be number 368. <clears throat> song after Brother David brings us a lesson be number 368. And having that marked, if you would please stand, we'll sing first, third, and last verses, number 36. <coughs> sing first, third, and last verses. Jesus. 
Another wonderful evening and another opportunity to look at one of our favorite Bible themes. We just have been singing about it, the love of God, the love of God. And I'd like to begin with you this evening by looking at just a few passages together that can get our minds uh, headed in the right direction. So please turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13, as we're headed over there, let me, let me remind you of a very familiar passage, Romans 5, verse 8. God commends his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But I like to look at passages that we don't look at just a whole lot, but also are very meaningful in regard to the love of God. In 2 Corinthians 13, toward the end of the chapter, yea, the end of the book, Notice with me in verse 11, Paul says, Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfected, be comforted, be all the same mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Salute one another with a holy kiss. All the saints salute you. And then notice verse 14, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. From there, jump over, if you don't mind, to 2 Thessalonians, the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 4 and 5, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 4 and 5. Paul again to the brethren now in Thessalonica, we have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you both do and will do the things which are commanded. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. Isn't that a wonderful statement? And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Jesus Christ. Flip back to the same book. 2 Thessalonians, now chapter 2, and verse 16. Chapter 2, verse 16. Paul says, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. And so these verses, just to get us thinking and started toward the great love of God. Three key words, key words tonight, salvation, separation, and then similarity. Salvation, separation, and similarity. The love of God produces all three of these things. So the first point is this, the love of God produces salvation. And let's quickly turn over to Ephesians chapter 2 to see that. Ephesians chapter 2, you remember this Chapter verses 1 through 3, Paul is rehearsing the fact that before we come to Christ, we were dead in our sins and we were dead in our trespasses. And we are walking according to the course of this world, according to the actually the ways of the devil himself. Okay, so verses 1 through 3, all bad. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, all bad. But, but, and thank the Lord there is the but here. Ephesians 2, verse 4, But God, being rich in mercy, for the great love wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, he has made us alive together with Christ. By grace have you been saved, and he's raised us up with him and made us to sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now as you read those verses, you also have in mind Romans 6, 3, and 4, where Paul asks the question, Know you not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Paul is rehearsing all of that right there in verses 4 through 6 of Ephesians 2. When he says, God, from the great love wherewith he has loved us, 
He has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And he has raised us up with him. And you can add another parallel verse there. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Where Peter's desire is that husbands and wives are heirs together of the grace of life. Now, it is God's love and grace that makes spiritual life with Christ possible. And so notice that the love of God produces the salvation that we can enjoy in Christ. We can, we can turn to no other place. Now, before we leave this first point, I want to review with you the love of God that brings salvation. Just a few points, a few ideas about what that love looks like, okay? And so this will just be a review for you, a quick review. But remembering here that the love of God produces salvation. This love that produces salvation is a sacrificial love. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 2, talks about the love of Christ, how he gave himself up for us as an offering and a sacrifice that comes out to be a sweet fragrance or sweet odor uh, unto God. Ephesians 5, 25, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for it. So it's a, it's a beautiful love in that it is a sacrificial uh, sort of love. If we ask God, God, how much do you love us? The Lord will always point to the cross, point to the cross, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. And then also recall that God's love that brings us salvation is a universal love. Again, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, God so loved the world, uh, that um, he gave his only begotten son. Okay. Uh, remember that Hebrews 2 and verse 9 says, For, by the, for the, by, by the grace of God, Christ tasted death for every man. For every man. It's a universal love. Uh, John comments on this in 1 John 2 verse 2. Jesus became the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world. Now you can read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, I think it is, that the whole world lies in the wicked one, lies in wickedness. In other words, follows the ways of the wicked one, the devil. Okay. But Jesus died in his love for, for all the world, all the world. So it's a universal uh, love. I, I don't understand, you know, in generations previous to this, there were, some who would um, espouse or hold up the doctrine of Calvinism, and part of Calvinism is that uh, only a few of all the world in each generation are chosen for salvation. And that, that's so uh, not true. And one of the reasons it's not true is because of the universal love of God. But God's love is not only sacrificial and universal, it's impartial. Okay? God doesn't love like man. Man often loves with favoritism, Man's love is often uh, conservative. Okay? Uh, man's love is often narrow, but God loves in a very impartial way. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9 says, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's the heart of God. He wants salvation for everyone. In Acts chapter 10, Peter said, Verses 34 and 35, that God is no respecter of persons. This is something that Peter was learning. Okay. He says, I have learned that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, every nation, he that fears God and works righteousness is accepted by him. And it took Peter a while to finally grasp that, get his arms around that, but that is so true about the love of God. So it's sacrificial, it's universal, and it is impartial. But it's also conditional. It's conditional. Not conditional in the sense that there, is, um, there's, there may be a time or circumstance where God will stop loving us. He'll never stop loving us. But in order for us to receive the blessings of his love, then we must submit to his words. We must submit 
uh, to his will. Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9, concerning Jesus, the Hebrew writer said, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all those who obey him. Who obey him. Jesus said himself in Matthew 7 and 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father uh, who is in heaven. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, Paul says, Now circumcision avails nothing, neither does uncircumcision avail anything, but faith that works through love. Faith that works through love. And he goes on the next verse, Galatians 5, 7, in, in an interesting way. He says, uh, some of you, writing to the Christians there in Galatia, uh, he says, some of you are, are being hindered. Some of you are doing well. You are running well, but now you're being hindered. And who has hindered you from obeying the gospel? They have stopped obeying. So God's love is certainly something that we want to grow in our lives. This is something that we need, but it is conditional. So it's sacrificial, universal, it's impartial, impartial uh, toward men, but it's a conditional uh, love as well. But it's also very powerful. God's love is powerful. There's, there's no one that God cannot save. He proved that on a number of occasions. But one of the prime examples is Paul himself. Notice what Paul said about himself in 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. He said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And it's almost as if God was looking down and he is showing the world that, yes, I can save anyone in my love who is willing to submit to me. And he, he looked at Paul, he challenged Paul with the gospel, and, God, and Paul responded with a humble heart. So it's a very powerful love as well. And so notice these just little ideas about love. The love that saves mankind is universal, it's sacrificial, it's impartial, it is conditional, and it's very, very powerful. And as we learned this morning, it's, it's very personal. It's personal. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me. He loved me. He loved me. There's a reason Jesus kept giving this little story about the shepherd that had a hundred sheep. And suppose one of them has gone astray. He will leave that 99 every time. And go after the one who has gone astray. It shows the personal nature of the love of God. We see an example of this in Acts chapter 8. Philip the evangelist is in a, uh, an area of Samaria. And multitudes are coming to hear him uh, preach the gospel. God took him away from Samaria because there was this man on a journey. The eunuch. He had been to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning home to uh, Ethiopia, and God had Philip enter this one man, this one unit. He had Philip to intercept his journey, and he went in there and he said, Do you understand what you read? He said, How can I except someone guide me? So they start, started right there in Isaiah 53 where he's reading, and he led him into a knowledge of Jesus, and they came upon a body of water. And the unit said, Here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And you know the rest of that story. But look how God pulled. Philip away from a multitude of people listening in Samaria all the way over here to this road this where this one fellow was. God's love is personal. Personal. And as we learned this morning also, we learned that God's, work, God's love is eternal. God wants us to be in heaven with him forever and ever. Now this is the love of God that brings salvation, that produces salvation on earth. And so that's our first key word is salvation. <clears throat> our second key word is separation. The love of God produces a separation from the world, brings salvation to man, yes. But it produces a separation from the world. Notice with me 1 John 3 and verse 1, where John talks about the love of God. He said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us 
that we should be called the children of God. How often do you thank the Lord for being a child of God and to be able to be called a Christian, to be called a child of the Father? John was bursting with praise because the love of God has brought salvation and you've become a child of God. He goes on to say, though, that the world does not know us because the world did not know him. You see, this love causes a separation uh, for those who dwell in God's love, those who follow him. Take your Bibles again to Ephesians with me for just a minute. Ephesians chapter 5. The first couple of verses there. Be you imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love, even as Christ also loved us, loved you, and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for an odor of sweet uh, smell. Now, as you know, the Bible was written inspired of God, but later man, kind, uninspired man, created these chapter divisions. And sometimes these chapter divisions are, are sensible, sometimes... Um, they cut off the thought. And here is one of those situations. If you notice, in Ephesians 4, Paul had been talking about a Christian being separated from the world. And then he leads right into that, talking about the love of God as beloved children and as uh, being imitators of that love and reminding us that Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering for us. So if you go back to Ephesians 4, Beginning in verse 25, notice three or four ways in which we are separated from the world. The love of God causes us to be separated in, in our words. In our words. Notice Ephesians 5, 25, he says, put away falsehood. You know what he said? Ephesians 5, oh, 4, 25. Put away falsehood and speak truth uh, with your neighbor for we are members one of another. Notice verse 29, let no corrupt speech proceed out of your mouth, but such as is good for edifying, as the need may be, that you may minister grace unto them that hear you. You may give grace. So that is real easy to see what kind of words we ought to be using, words that encourage, words that, that remind people of God's love, words that remind people of, of God's grace, words that are not corrupt, no corrupt communication, none whatsoever, nothing suggestive, nothing uh, provocative, only words that pertain to God. And so uh, we are separated and, um, by the love of God in our words. But also notice uh, we're separated in how we handle our wrath. Notice verse 26 and 27, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And need to, need to give place to the devil. The Christian handles his anger in a greater way, more godly way than the rest of the world uh, does. One thing, we deal with it quickly. Okay? We don't have time as Christians. We have too much to do. We have too many good things to be involved in to let anger linger on past sundown at the very most. Okay? We just do not have the time for that. Our minds are not made to handle both things of worship and things of anger. Our, our minds are not made to handle both, both spiritual matters and matters of anger. We put that away. And one of the reasons we put it away is because the devil works in that workshop. The devil loves to see us get angry and frustrated. He can move right in and gain some territory on us. But he says, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. And do not give place to the devil. Okay. And so we are separated by the love of God both in our words and in how we handle our wrath and also in our work. Notice Ephesians 4 and verse uh, 28. Let him who stole the thief steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good so that he may have whereof to give to him who is in need. Jesus once said, according to Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Of course, 
According to 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, we are to provide for our own. But one of the main reasons we work, honest work, labor with our hands, is so that we'll have whereof to be able to give because that's what our Lord did. Okay. As Jesus himself says in Matthew 20, verse 28, the Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but rather to serve, to minister, and to give. And he himself says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so we're separated by the love of God in our words, in our wrath, and in our work, and also according to verse 32 of Ephesians chapter 4, in our willingness to forgive. Our willingness to uh, forgive. And so that's just an example of how the love of God is to separate us. You see, the world does not know us, should not know us, because it did not know Jesus. So the first key word is salvation. second one is separation. Now similarity. Our third point is the love of God produces a similarity to God. This is one of our favorite ideas of all time. Going back to Paul's classic verses here in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 about the love of God. He says... Be you imitators of God as beloved children. In other words, as children loved by God. In other words, as the love of God is in your life, you need to imitate it. You need to imitate it. And so we need to think about that for a moment. Being imitators of God's love. This may be the most important part. What, what did we just sing what was that song, Jeff, number 36? Love of God. Love of God. You're feeling pretty good, aren't you? Yeah. Why don't you come up here and bring that song book with you. Just look at some of those words again. Because this speaks right to um, the love of God producing a similarity um, to love. So let's just read these verses. We won't sing them. But Jeff, why don't you just read... Read the stanza first again, and um, let's just let this uh, sink down in our heart. Just the verses. Just the verses. Since the love of God has shed priceless blessings on my head, I have made it my own. I will hide it in my heart that it never may depart. It shall rule there alone. Since the Son of God came down with his love our lives to crown, he with us would remain Greater love there could not be. Jesus died for you and me in our hearts. He would reign. He who gave his love to me that I might from sin be free bids me share it today. As I loved you, he has said, you must serve men in my stead as you go on your way. While his love burns true and bright, we are walking in the light. He has shown us the road. We, his glory, must reflect, lest our dimness and neglect keep some soul from its God. Okay. Thank you very much. Notice, we must, his glory, reflect. And notice he bids us to share uh, this great love. Notice a few passages with me that expresses these very ideas. John 13, Jesus had just washed the disciples' feet. And he's teaching his disciples to love. He says, a, a new commandment, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that as I have loved you, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. We mentioned the other day, Jesus didn't ask for a throne to sit upon per se, but rather he asked for a towel to serve. And that's what we must keep in our minds. And also going back to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse uh, 32. He says, Be ye kind one to another and tenderhearted, forgiving each other, even as God, even as God also in Christ forgave you. Notice the sameness there. Notice the, the similarity. That's the idea, the similarity. Uh, we are his children, John says, 1 John 3, verse 1. The love of God has brought salvation and made us his children. And children must resemble the Father. 
Children resemble their parents. Okay. Uh, we cannot deny our children because they take on both physical and also moral sometimes. Uh, they take on mannerisms of their parents and of their grandparents. Okay, They're in this, They'll say, you know, uh, you're the spitting image of your grandfather or you're the spitting image of your grandmother. And we ought to bear resemblance in a very great way uh, to the Heavenly Father. And so just as God has forgiven us, so we must uh, forgive one another. And then notice... Um, in 1 John especially, these, these type passages, and we could read a lot in 1 John, but notice in 1 John 3, verse 16. Hereby know we love, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He laid down his life for us, and in turn... As imitators of that love, we lay, lay down our lives uh, for the brethren. Notice in 1 John 4, beginning in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loves is begotten of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God. For God is love. Okay. If one professes to know God and does not love as God loves, then he doesn't have very much knowledge of God. Notice what he says there. He that loves not does not know God, for God is love. And then notice 1 John 4, 10 and 11. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved... If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And then once again, same chapter beginning in verse 19. We love because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this is a commandment we have from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. And we could just enumerate those types of passages but notice how the love of God is to produce a similarity in us to God that's Romans 8 29 mentions being conformed to the image of his son we are to become God like God on earth people are to see Christ living in us Galatians 2 verse 20 I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So folks are to see Christ living in us. And one final passage, Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse uh, 43, concerning this similitude, this similarity between us and God. <clears throat> Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Most of the world still lives by that kind of principle. But, Jesus says, but I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for them that persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them that love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same thing? Ye therefore shall be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Notice that last statement. That is a command from God. You shall be perfect in this love, as your heavenly Father is perfect in this love. We don't have a choice here. The love of God must produce a similarity, a very sharp, a very clear similarity between us and the Father. Folks must see Jesus living in us because of that love. Going back to John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another.
You go back and think about all those characteristics of godly love. Sacrificial, universal, impartial, hopeful, powerful, personal. That sort of love is to characterize us as well. God wants everyone to be saved and go to heaven. That must be our driving force as well. Don't you dare make that decision for somebody else. That is not fair, and it is dishonest of us when we do that. Do not dare say, well, they won't be interested, or this person will not be interested. You are making that decision for them. You, our job, all of us, together and separately, we are to get people together with the Word of God. Let them make the decision. More times than not, their decision is going to be favorable toward our Lord. And so just a couple of thoughts tonight. The love of God brings salvation, of course. The love of God brings a separation from the world. The love of God brings a similarity uh, to himself. And if we can assist you this evening with any spiritual need, we stand ready. What better subject to think about today than heaven, which is a product of God's love, and then to think clearly about his love uh, this evening. We would love to assist you with any need that you have. If you, you may be ready to put Jesus on in baptism, it may be that you just want to renew your love uh, with the Father. Won't you please come right now as we stand together, as we sing. All to Jesus I need to take the Lord's Supper, be sure to do that during this next song. You may go back to our conference room and be served uh, there. We look forward to being together this Wednesday evening for our midweek 
uh, time together. We have Bible classes for all ages. And look around and, and find someone that may not uh, be here today and uh, seek to bring them uh, back to us. Or look around uh, in your daily life and invite someone to come this Wednesday night for our midweek uh, Bible study. Closing hymn be number 349. We'll sing the first and last verses. 349. <clears throat> Gracious God, our almighty God and Father in heaven, we humbly come before you with our prayer on behalf of this congregation. Father, we have been reminded tonight of your great love for us, for your amazing grace, for your endless mercy, for your patience with us, for the gift of your Son on the cross. Father, we can't begin to comprehend that great love. But help us, Father, to comprehend enough of it, to appreciate it, to eternally be thankful to you for it, and enough that we will fill our hearts with it and try to imitate you as best we can. We pray that we may love you with all of our heart and soul and strength. And we pray that we may love one another because we know that you have said that this is how the world will know who we are, by our love for one another. Father, please forgive us when we fail in this and other areas when we sin. Please forgive us. Help us to strive every day to do our best to walk in the light as his in the light. Our Father, now please dismiss us in your love and in your care, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat>